We grieve that the church has become a broken community in a broken world. Pretty heavy stuff. Maybe you've seen some brokenness in your own congregation. But the contemporary testimony also says, we marvel that the Lord gathers broken pieces to do His work. Today, we're going to talk with Pastor Dave Bielan about what unity looks like in his church, a church filled with people from lots of different backgrounds and cultures. How do they all get along? Let's listen on this edition of Living Your Faith. I kind of um, cut my teeth on preaching in the prison, which is a pretty challenging place to learn how to preach. In that prison, the guys who came to the service were getting there at 8.30 in the morning. And um, they could choose not to be there, so they really wanted to be there. And um, a couple of things I noticed right away. Number one, I was young. I was only 27. Actually, 26. I was 26 years old. I was white. And I was out of my element. And I also noticed that they sang the song Victory in Jesus like I've never heard it sung since with such um, passion. And they came up for prayer afterwards and poured their hearts out. So it was a real environment. People really wanted to be there. The reason my wife and I started coming here is because there was so much, I would call it authenticity. People would express themselves. They'd come up for prayer. One of the first things I did as a seminary student was start to lay hands on people, anoint them with oil, pray for them. Um, the brokenness of the neighborhood and the people was so evident, they didn't try to hide it from each other. So it was a refreshing environment. One of the theme texts of this church has been for probably three decades now, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. And that text says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who are captive. And so it's the poor, it's the addicted, it's the broken people who, of course, we're all like that. It's our sinful condition. They're the ones who lead us to, to appreciate the gospel, to pour our hearts out in worship. One of the people that goes to our church has graduated from Mel Trotter Ministries, which is a, a ministry for homeless people. And um, he doesn't read and write very well, but he's got lots of scripture memorized. And so when he prays, he prays scripture. And it has had a powerful effect on me as a pastor and other people that hear him pray. The people who go to Mel Trotter here, who've lost everything, including their reputation, so they don't have anything to hide anymore. Plus people that are sort of obviously broken and their life has broken them, um, they kind of lead the way and, and keep bringing us back to being authentic, which is one of the great gifts of this church. I see hundreds of young people and they're in a high-tech, low-touch culture where um, people are numbered and not named, um, where they're, they're, they've missed being fathered and mothered, um, but I'm thinking of fathers especially, and to try to relate to God as their father is, is a huge challenge. There's just a lot of hurt out there, and there's very few destinations or spiritual homes, and they're all on a journey, and um, they ought to be able to find a home theologically, uh, relationally, a place where they can kick their shoes off and let their hair down and, and feel like there's grace there. We used to be a, what I would call just Jew and Gentile church. It was just black and white. And now we're, we're truly becoming multi-ethnic and the whole rainbow of differences is greater than it used to be. And it's actually been quite healthy for us because what we recognize is that our assumptions about what's wrong racially between black and white don't always apply to the other groups. And um, sometimes uh, Koreans, for example, have experienced a great deal of, of racial anger and misunderstanding from African Americans. So, so the, the complexity of the situation has, has changed dramatically. 
but it's it's helped all of us say uh, you know this this isn't just an issue between black and white people this is an issue between all people it's messy in every way that human communities are messy we focus on Jesus who's a great reconciler and we don't pretend that we don't have all this ugly history we have to deal with it 